numbers in mind, and Alex is going to show you Alex is going to show you some OCL scout attacks. Oh, after wait, I got a few more slides. So that was the permutation demo attack, and I'll put these slides up so you all can have the commands. But like I said, if you can in, on OC, on Hashcat, if you can use the GUI. Shift your file. There we go. All right. So, um, at, like I said, with Hashcat, if you can use the GUI, it's really nice how it gives you the command at the bottom, and then once you learn how to do it, um, you can do it from the command line. But the GUI is really nice. Um, there's a picture of the GUI. Yeah, it's supposed to look on a blind, also, doesn't it? I have not. I, I have been. It would be in backtrack if it worked properly on one. I have not got it to work properly, and it's only. A file system problem. Because oh, when I saw it, it said something about do things for supporting wine. Yeah, it, it doesn't really work. Well, it does and it doesn't, and so okay. I, I've been making a list of things that I, the guy that wrote it is not really part of the Hashcat team. He's kind of a friend, and so I got a list of stuff I want to submit to him because I would like it to work with wine perfectly. But so it's it, so it, anyone can feel free to try it on wine. Um, currently, it just doesn't work good enough for me to actually put it in Backtrack. But as soon as it does, I will, because uh, the GUI is nice. It's easy to use. Anyway, so here's some more Hashcat speed tests just to show you. As you can see, this is compared against Password Pro again. Um, the reason they do that is because basically Password Pro um, was the best password cracking software on the market until Hashcat came around. Um, as you can see, Passwords Pro on System 1, 7.27 million passwords per second, and Hashcat with only one thread on System 1 is 8.8. .8. So even just the software compared one thread at a time, it's even a million keys per second faster. So um, I'm not going to go over all the stats again. but All right. So... The next tool was OCL Hashcat, which basically is the exact same thing, except it's GPU accelerated. Um, it does work on Windows. Um, it does not currently have a GUI, so you have to learn how to use it from the command line. Um, here's the, the features are, obviously, it's free. Um, the biggest feature which attracted me to this, I used to use another tool that was called the CUDA Multiforcer, which is a CUDA-based and TLM cracker. The problem with it was is that it was not. It did not utilize multi GPUs. It only used one GPU. So I have a box with a series of 295 GTXs in it. So the reason that was bad was e even on one 295 GTX card, it's basically two cards inside. So I was really only using one half of one card. And so um, OCL Hashcat can utilize every half of every single card. Um, so with four 295 GTXs, it's basically like I have eight uh, GPU cards. Um, runs on Linux and Windows, uses OpenCL. It's uh, definitely the fastest multi-hash MD5 cracker on NVIDIA and ATI cards. Um, it supports wordless and uh, also does brute force mask attacks. It can mix the wordless. We're going to show that in a minute. Um, there's a setting. Uh, normally on Linux, when you run a GPU-based cracker, it uh, makes your desktop completely unusable. Um, and so there's a flag in there where you can set what's called the nice level. So a nice of one. Uh, obviously, the cracker wouldn't run as fast, but you would still be able to work on your desktop. Um, we don't run a desktop, so we're not worried about that. But some people do, so it's a nice feature to have. Um, anyway, supports huge numbers of hashes. Obviously, you can load 4 million hashes at once. And uh, I've tried that. It works. And uh, it includes the Hashcatch rule engine also. So you can use the same rules. Um, the only bad part so far, and this is subject to change, is that it does not support as many algorithms as Hashcat. There's a variety of uh, high-tech reasons, which are way over my head, which Adam could explain of why some algorithms aren't supported. But... Um, most of the main ones here are. Um, the only one that I've needed that's not on here is Microsoft SQL um, passwords. Um, that's the only one basically that I've, that I've run into that wasn't supported that I needed an OCL hashcat. 
So here's some OCL Hashcat statistics. Um, these are just compared against a, another popular GPU program. I don't even know how you say that, IG hash GPU or something, I don't know. But uh, as you can see, once again, it shines in multiple hashes. With two hashes, the speed's similar, you know, 200. So, and just this speed, remember what we were getting about 30 million with Hashcat? Now we're up to um, 23,000, or 2 billion, 392 million keys per second. So we've considerably amplified our lookup process. And uh, so as you can see, it's similar speeds with two hashes. But when we load 500,000 hashes, this one goes down to 832 million keys per second, but ours stays at 1 billion 89 million I don't know, anyway, keys per second. So you can look at that later if you want to look at some more statistics. Um, the main attacks of OCL Hashcat are brute force, or these are the attacks that we're going to show. Brute force, which obviously, I mean, hopefully everyone knows, brute force is just um, specifying a character length and trying every single thing in that character length. So lowercase a to z, uppercase a to z, zero to nine, and uh, all the special characters. And then there's the hybrid mask attacks. Like I said, Alex is going to show us how to do all those with the... Uh, uh, what, with whatever we specify appended to the end of a dictionary word. So uh, you'll, you'll see, it'll make sense when we show it to you. And then the best attack of all, which is the fingerprint attack, and hopefully we can get that going. Um, real quick, last, the way the character sets work in uh, OCL Hashcat. All right, you want to explain the character sets? No, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so, and, and this will make more sense when it's on the command line, but, but, that question mark L means lowercase, question mark U means uppercase, question mark D means digits, question mark S means special characters. And the way that you specify more is you do a dash one and then you do the character sets that you want. And you can also remove that and just specify the straight letters to make a custom mask. And so here's an example of a custom character set at the bottom. So you have to have a left mask and a right mask, which basically means you have to have characters on the left side and the right side. It's just the way Hashcat's coded. So if you were going for a seven character password, you would have four character sets on the left side and three character sets on the right side for a total of seven. And so here's, here's an example of a custom character set. You give this flag and then you give the D for digits. So what this would be is hexadecimal. So I'm given D for digits, but then I'm only specifying the first six letters of the alphabet for a base 16 number set. So that would set the character set to hex. So that's how you do that custom character sets. So this is an example of a brute force. This one, hold on, real quick before I, and so, just real quick, md5.txt is the list of hashes to be um, cracked. Um, dash M is the type of hash. Dash N is the nice setting I was talking about, workload tuning, one being the nicest and 160 being the heaviest. Um, you can give the GPU devices flag. By default, it will use them all. But if you um, give the GPU devices flag and you only wanted to use one card, for example, because you were watching something on the other card, um, you could do that and only use one card and still utilize your other card for your desktop. And uh, there's a GPU loops flag too, which just adds a little bit more. And so this is how these ones down here at the bottom is how you would show the left mask and the white, and the left mask and the right mask. And so just to show you up here in this command, see how I gave the dash one. And so what I did was I defined dash one as lowercase digits, special and upper. And then so over here on the right, I have a left mask and a right mask where I define six characters for a six character brute force. And so Alex is going to show us how to do that real quick. Cool. You all sit here? Yeah. All right. Again, my name's Alex. Um, I'm fairly new to password cracking and information security in general. I have done a lot of information security over time, but not specifically in the information security scene. Um, but uh, I've worked in online gaming, um, telecommunications, and I currently work in healthcare. Um, so anyhow, uh, the beauty of Hashcat is it's really an application that helps people understand password cracking because in the past, password cracking has specifically been about brute forcing and not many people understand the, the in-depth pattern matching of password cracking, you know, where people always 
you know, the typical character sets that you want to use are lowercase and digits because most people use lowercase and digits. And so it's not to say that nobody uses uppercase or special characters, but it definitely doesn't happen as much as specifically lowercase and digits. So, you know, if you have limited resources and you want to crack longer passwords, lowercase and digits are the best combination to use to try to get the most out of, out of the resources that you have to crack the passwords. So Hashcat's philosophy on the left and right side is really cool because you can take the same word list and actually put it on the left side and also the right side and now you have words that you wouldn't have necessarily thought of in a dictionary you know because it's two it's com combining every word in the left side to the right side so uh, you can also take the, a word list and just add say four digits to the right side and so or you could prepend those four digits and do four digits on the in the beginning of every word Somebody might use their birth date or, you know, something like that. So um, something that's barely new to, to password cracking is something Adam came up with. It's called a fingerprint attack, and it's for, you know, when you get large lists of passwords. And so a large list of passwords may be, say, you know, like, like you were saying earlier, somebody may have hacked Google and gotten 100 million passwords or something like that. And so... You're looking for patterns of words, and more specifically, even if you took a smaller company and they had 10,000 employees, everybody may use, you know, say Humana in the front of their password if they worked at Humana, along with, you know, their kid's name and some digits or something like that. And so you, you look for patterns, and with patterns, you can create larger word lists, and you take those patterns and combine them with variables such as digits, lowercase, char sets, whatever it may be, and you're percentage of cracking passwords is going to get higher and higher. And the more you do password cracking, you'll create dictionaries that are based on real world lists that are going to give you a higher rate of cracking passwords. And so the more experience you have and the more the more lists you build on yourself, the higher rate of passwords you're going to crack. Um, so with OCL Hashcat here, we are going to go in here. No. Okay. It's right here. Oh, right. So what I did earlier, this box is a little bit slower than the box that we normally use to crack passwords um, and the other box is being used right now. So um, what I did earlier, which took about 15 minutes on this box, it takes a little bit less than a minute, I think, on our other box. But I brute forced, I, I basically took the NTLM password hashes out of the DEF CON password list and I think it was like 30,000 or close to it, 31,000, something like that. And I was basically just taking Adam's password fingerprinting concept and applying it to these 30,000 hashes. And so I basically trimmed the list down to the NTLM only hashes and I ran a five character, five character brute force on the NTLM hashes. And so in the beginning of password fingerprinting, you'll you use something like a brute force, for instance, to get come up with the initial patterns. And the initial patterns I came up with are oops, five char. This was the initial list that it came up. So this is what Hashcat split spit out, and you'll see stuff: Clark, bears, ducks. You know, just simple stuff. And so. Then you, you cut that list down and create a dictionary file out of it. And this is where this is where password fingerprinting comes in. So this is technically a dictionary file now that I've these are real passwords that I've gotten from that DEF CON list. Adam wrote this tool called the expander, and so what you do is I think it's just in and out. Yeah, there it is. So what you do is you you take the expander and take an input file, for instance, that dictionary I just created which is the five char out, and that the expander is really simple. All it does is it takes the five character combinations that you have and makes every possible combination out of those five character combinations. So if you had one, two, 